Hello everybody and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we're back with the H135 and I'm hoping to answer many of your questions and problems that you guys have been having configuring the H135 for flight. And hopefully this video will give you all the answers and tips and tricks that you guys need in order to enjoy this experience. All right, so the first thing that I want to address is the controls. Now, for those of you who are using a genuine Xbox controller, unfortunately, I don't know how much help I can be because I don't have one uh, that I can connect to my PC. Um, I haven't used one in a very long time, so I'm not sure what the configuration is. However, for everybody else, under power management, the only thing you need anymore is the throttle axis. You no longer need the pitch. So you need throttle axis, and if you want to be able to push the throttle forward, and be able to add power um, just like you do in any other of your airplanes then make sure to reverse the axis but that's all we need for this flight control surfaces we shouldn't need any of these these are flaps things that were bound from other controllers or from uh, other profiles um, so you shouldn't need any of these guys anymore okay so all you need is throttle one axis that's it all right so now let's go ahead and go back and go to resume the next thing we'll do is we'll talk about the startup procedures Startup procedures in this are actually very simple. So let's come down here, and you're going to take your battery switch, which is right here. Oh, sorry, right there. I was like, why isn't doing anything? Because you're using the wrong one. Flip that on. We can go to the overhead panel. Turn on our beacon light, our nav light, strobe light, I guess, if you want. We're going to be taking off directly from here, so it's you know up to you, really. And then I'm going to come on back down here. And this is where everything gets confusing. Even I had to reach out to someone to find out what was going on here. You can see that your mouse on this yellow switch, let's zoom in a bit here, your mouse will go over, but when you click on it, nothing happens. It's the scroll wheel. You need to use your mouse wheel to take it up into the first position. And we'll let engine one roll on. Now that it says idle, we'll do the same thing with engine two. One little mouse click forward or mouse roll. Remember, this is the mouse wheel. Got to use your scroll wheel forward is what I'm doing. All right, so we've got two engines at idle here. So now if I take my throttle axis and I start rotating it, you can see I get FADEC not engaged. And this is somebody, an issue that somebody else reported. No matter what I do, it won't activate. 
What we have to do is we have to come down to our engine switches and switch the switch one more time forward into flight mode. Doing either side should activate both. So here we go. And now you can you can even hear it. She's she's ready to roll, right? And so now if we were to add some or add the collective we are airborne now real quick I want to try to go over a basic flight tutorial of the helicopters for you guys now I'm no helicopter pilot Everything that I've done for helicopters is in simulation, but I'm hoping that I can get some of you who are struggling to fly a helicopter maybe a little bit more um, familiar, more comfortable with it. All right, now remember I fly on the advanced mode, which I actually base on testing around with a couple of the others, the basic and the um, Xbox mode, I actually think it's easier to do because it makes more sense about what's going on. So the first thing that we have to understand is what everything is used for. In slow flight, okay, just like when we're taking off in a standard propeller aircraft, okay, the aircraft's always going to want to kick one direction or the other based on which way the propeller is turning, right? We get that, uh, that prop wash. All right, so the helicopter is going to be the same thing. All right, so if I were, I'm going to keep my feet off the rudder pedals and it just adds some collective and we're going to see that the helicopter is going to want to turn to the right. It's already starting to. Okay, that's because of the rotation caused by the main rotor. All right, so what we have to do is we have to counteract that with left rudder. Well, centrifugal force is also trying to kick the aircraft's weight over to the right, as we can see here. So that's where our flight stick comes into play and we're going to have to kick it to the left a little bit to counteract that. So with just enough left rotor, or um, left cyclic, and just enough left tail rotor, we can get a decently easy pickup. And then you just have to control your pitch. Everything at slow speed, you got to remember, you're actually pitching the propeller itself, the main rotor. So if you pitch it forward, well, you're going to start getting forward momentum, aft, etc. That green dot in the center is your flight direction. Notice that whichever direction I pitch the cyclic, that green dot in the center of our HSI goes. Okay, so if I want to do a centered flight, my objective is going to be to try to center that as much as possible. Oh, I got a little too slow on the collective. There we go. So again, you can see we're kicking to the right. And so what I recommend doing is, before you try to fly it, just sort of do what we're doing here. Pick it up off the runway, pick it up off your taxiway, and just get familiar with how to stabilize the aircraft. Okay, because once you get that, then it becomes a lot easier to manipulate it to do what you want to do. Because from this position, without adding any more collective, I can pitch the aircraft forward, use ground effect to start gaining some airspeed, Remember, at slow speed, we still have to control that tail rotor. So as the aircraft's starting to tweak one direction or the other, we need to adjust the nose. Your rudder pedals are going to point your nose, just like they do in any other airplane. But as we start gaining airspeed, you can see we've actually gained a little bit of altitude. And there it is. We have now transitioned out of ground effect. And I haven't changed any collective. Oops. I haven't had added any more power since when we were floating around the ground. Now I can only go so high at this point, And you can see we're starting to sink down again. And as we start to transition, I'm just going to start pulling back on the nose to stop our forward momentum. And we're going to start getting back into that pillow of ground effect. Okay, so just try doing that a little bit before, if, you know, if you're struggling with the helicopter a lot, don't, don't go flying all over the place. Just get it to where she's comfortable for you. 
biggest thing is to understand how they work and not to overfight it. You know, slowly add power so you get an idea what's going to do. Okay, there's our left turning, so now I'm adding that left tail rotor again. Well, now we're rocking one direction, so I'm going to pull back into the right a little bit. All right. Oh, I'm going forward. I don't want to go forward, so I need to pull more back, right? Everything's about where that pitch is. And then when you get that green dot centered where you want to be, like we'll even flirt with the trees here a little bit. And it takes lots of practice. Like I said, guys, when I first started these videos, where I'm comparing this helicopter is to the DCS UH-1. It's probably one of my favorite aircraft in DCS. It's, they're a ton of fun to fly. If you're looking for a really good helicopter simulation, highly recommend it. DCS World itself is free to download, and the UH-1 is just a blast. You know, learning how to fly sideways, that's what makes helicopters so cool. You know, I'm using to use left rudder, left tail rotor, to keep the nose pointed towards the trees, and then I'm using my right cyclic to control the direction. Adding collective as we descend. And then when you want to reverse it, it's just a matter of adding the opposite direction long enough to stop the momentum. So I hope this is making sense. I hope this has helped you guys a little bit. It wasn't, uh, wasn't meant to be too crazy. I've just seen a lot of people struggling with some of the basic stuff, and I want to do what I can to help. So biggest thing is to remember... Uh, the throttle or, or the propeller axis is no longer required. You don't have to model the pitch or uh, map the pitch anymore, just the throttle. Okay, and then as far as your Xbox controllers, if I were in your situation, depending on how you have, what options you have for mapping it, I think my recommendation would be to use your triggers for your tail rotor. I would use the left thumbstick for your collective forward and backwards and then use your right thumbstick for your cyclic and I think if you do that you should be able to um, control it pretty well because now that the throttle is no longer required or I should say the pitch is no longer required it's all in one so you only need the one axis so the collective is going to act as a throttle as well and I think that's where the fade at comes into play with this helicopter um, because typically with the throttle on a helicopter like for example the UH-1 being a perfect example um, when you start the engine, okay, you throttle up to um, slowly to make sure the engine RPM matches the rotor speed. Um, but once you have your RPM set, you really don't touch it again. Um, now, there are caveats to that, guys. Remember, this is supposed to be a high-level explanation. Um, hello. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you don't really touch it again. Everything is controlled with the collective, okay? Okay. And you just got to remember what the collective is doing. The collective is just changing the angle of that uh, main rotor blade. When the collective is all the way down, the rotor blades are basically flat. So they're not generating any lift. And then as you pull up on the collective, it literally is changing the angle of the blade itself to generate, you know, think of it as lay a feather on your desk, right? And put your hand directly over it horizontally and swipe it across real fast. Well, your hand's not going to generate really any wind doing that, so chances are the feather's not going to really move at all. However, if you take your hand again and you turn it vertically and swipe it across that feather, well, as you guys know, that feather's going to pick up off your desk and go flying somewhere. That's the same thing that's happening when we are pulling up on the collective. We're changing those rotor blades to a more vertical position to where they generate the lift. All right. Um, so I... I I hope some of this is making sense. I hope this information is helpful. Helicopters are so much fun to fly. And I remember, though, I did struggle a lot when I first got into it in DCS. Um, but they're really a blast. And so I don't want anyone getting discouraged by it. So if you guys have any further questions or anything I can do uh, to sort of demonstrate how I'm flying them, by all means, let me know. I wish that uh, I wish that Microsoft Flight Simulator had like a controls indicator or something that you guys could see on the screen that would show you where my physical controls are, you know, my OTAS is. Um, that's the other thing I'll give you guys a recommendation on. If you know, I know not everyone can afford Thrustmaster Warthogs and Bravo Throttle Quadrants, and you know, I totally get it. I've been there. You know, I started with the uh, I started DCS World with an old what was that thing? The X. The, what was it? Microsoft the th 3D Extreme? That's what it was called. The little little Microsoft Flight Stick with an itty bitty throttle on the back of it. 
Um, so, I mean, I, I totally get it. You know, this, this, it took a while to get my system to where it is now. Um, so, again, you know, map things accordingly to priority. Your, your big priorities with um, Microsoft Flight Simulator helicopters definitely going to be the throttle, but understanding how the throttle works. You know, as we're moving around right now, you know, if I reduce my throttle, I'm changing, I'm flattening those rotor blades up there, which is causing the lift to be lost, and which is why you can see we're descending. If I increase them, and it uh, increases our lift and the helicopter is beginning to rise. So it's really critical for that transition phase. Um, if you're flying on the advanced model, which I do recommend, because yes, it is more difficult, but it's, it's going to make more sense what the helicopter is doing. Um, and, and how to correct it. And that's why I recommend for those of you using the Xbox controller um, to have your triggers as the tail rotor because they act as an axis if memory serves. You know, they're pressure sensitive. And so you'll be able to slightly adjust the amount of tail rotor that you're adding, um, you know, in, in relationship to what the helicopter is actually doing. Um, same thing with using the collective on one of your... Um, Thumbsticks, I think that's pretty critical. Now, the thumbstick on the collective, the only caveat, or caveat, the only issue I guess I see there is going to be um, the fact that it's centered already. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure how we would combat that because basically what that means is when you activate the FADEC, you're going to want to make sure you pull that thumbstick all the way back because otherwise it's going to put the collective in a centered position. The aircraft's going to take off very violently. Um, so just think about things like that. Um, I wish I had more help for you guys using the Xbox sticks, but for anybody else, as long as you have a stick and throttle, um, you should be okay. Um, even a twist grip for the tail rotor is ideal or, or can be used. Rudder pedals are ideal, but you know, I mean, use what you got. And then, uh, if there's anything I can do to help guys, by all means, let me know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found it useful. And uh, by all means, continue to leave those questions and comments down below. I'll be happy to help in any way I can. I made this video specifically for your questions, guys. So, um, you know, I, I don't ever have a problem doing that. I'm here to help. That's what started this whole channel was me just trying to smooth some of these learning curves and things over. So uh, anyway, hope you guys liked it. And uh, I will catch you guys in the next one.